to be with you since of the Lord. Uh, it's been 2005 or some few years ago, when I missed her in Miami, along with all the ministers. We shot somehow for good in, uh, in Singapore. Amen. And uh, we had uh, some wonderful time in the Lord, which uh, is still in my memory. So when I had the opportunity of coming down to Philippines, I had to write but I understood that I would want to have a touch in her and get in touch with other saints. Amen. So uh, I thank the Lord so much for what is happening here in your country. Uh, everything is peaceful, you have seen, and the work of God is moving for, forward. Uh, back in Africa, we are trying our best. Uh, as it is conflict zone politically, that's how it is with uh, the word of God also. Everything we have to fight through. And uh, the Lord has really been a blessing to us because we are having the victory. Uh, in 2006, after I departed from Benadani and Ernesto, we were able to break through a primitive uh, region in Uganda. And we also thank the Lord for Voice of God. They were able to support us with enough materials. And one very important thing that happened was that uh, among these primitive people were those who, when we say primitive, you know there is no education there actually. They've never been to school, but the day that the Lord touched them and they received the Holy Ghost, they started reading and preaching, even in languages that they have not read before. And these things, uh, when we look back to it, is what gives us the push to say, let us go forward. Let us do that which we ought to do, because the Bible says that this message of the kingdom must be preached, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached unto every nation for a witness, then shall the end come. Uh, a while ago I was sitting there, I was hearing on the makeup of the body and in relation with your mission field work. It is very important because a few years ago, uh, what I saw in the end time message was that uh, we should just sit down in the church and uh, fuse with one another. That's what is actually going to lead to. When you have eaten so much and there is no way for you to empty these things, your brother will become a problem. You will get to know that his mouth is smelling. You get to know that he's too fat. You get to know that he's too thin. Complaints will be here and there. It's not that there is problem with you or there is problem with him, but the thing is that what you have received was not meant to be kept. Amen. It was not for you. Yeah. Amen. You have a gift not for yourself, but Amen. for your environment. Right. Because it Amen. is through you that God is intending to reach out to the world yet unreached. He said in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 6, I have guided thee, 45 verse 5, even though thou hast not known me. Right. He has kept us. We were not born message believers, most of us here. And if you were, I think it's not a plus. If you were born a believer of this message, it's not a plus because you will become pharisaical in nature. Amen. 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 So because the experience, when you experience something, we, we come from a place where on a Sunday service, if you can have one successful Sunday service and get out, then you, you praise the Lord. Because while you are ministering, while you are worshipping, grenades are thrown into the church and you hear the past. And then the pastor is dead. Some people, about 18 less. That's it. It's happening the way it's happening in Nigeria. It's happening also in Pakistan. But will we say that because these things, that these challenges are there, that people will not press forward to hear what they ought to hear? We owe God a duty. Amen. If he has given his life in his son, if he has given us something so precious, then we owe him a duty to stand in our guard and make sure that everything that was to be done 
by ourselves we will not fail. Amen. Amen. So I have a scripture I just want to share just in the next one minute because I know I came late because we were traveling and traveling. If you put up uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, just to buttress what we were, what we have been discussing. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. 6 and 7 will do. It says, uh, see the 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that he might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Amen. You see, we have one common enemy in one common field. But the moment we take our eyes off reality, the moment we take our eyes off the things that God is expecting us to look at, then we will do things that are not profitable. How do we tolerate one another? We are not yet angels. We are men. Amen. In this flesh. And we have weaknesses. We have, we, we, we have shortcomings. So, but I used to be a soldier. And I, I, we were taught that if a soldier is wounded in the battlefront, the next thing you are to do if you are nearest to him is to carry him away from the fierceness of the battle. That's why in every country when soldiers are to be taken, they carry bags of sand and they run with it. That is, you are carrying this bag of sand, maybe heavier than a human being, so that when you be carrying the humans, it will be much easier. So, but we have found out that we have this army of Christ that is showing to the world that it's not uh, a disciplined army. Whereby, if we find an opportunity to talk about our brother, or we, or maybe some news come to us concerning the weakness of another brother, that is when we want to show how special we are. Mm. But we look, need to look back at the scripture. Or look back at the life of Brother Brown. There was nothing he complained about. If he was seated on this seat and you come and say, Oh, Brother Brown, this, this was where I was seated. He will humbly stand up and allow you to occupy the seat. But let's look at the perfect example. The Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples of John came to him and asked if he was the one. Or maybe they should wait for another. Now the apostles, they were waiting for the day that John will be run down. And they felt that day had come. This guy had been pulling his shoulder too much. Now look at the mess he's doing. Jesus hit him back. But they were disappointed. The message that he had kept in his mind about John. The very wonderful ministry of John. That day he brought it out. To cover every weakness. To cover every kind of pain that he might have brought forth. He said, among men that are born of women, they had not risen a greater than John. Now, what is this? That was not what the apostles were expecting to hear. They expected him to ridicule John. They expected him to be ashamed of him. And say how much... Uh, disappointed he, he is in him, but it was an example to us that we learn to consider that the weakness of that brother is not, it has nothing to do with the things that God has planted in his life for the ministry. Any of us would have had the bad daughter, any of us would have had the, 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 the stubborn child, the stubborn boy as a son. Any of us would have had uh, uh, a, a, maybe a rebellious wife. Any of us. It could have happened to any of us. But we should learn to put ourselves in the shoe of the other person 
And then if we do that, we will learn to pray for one another. Amen. You cannot criticize the person you pray for. If you sincerely pray for your brothers, in the days of adversity, you will stand for him. In the days of adversity, you will put Satan to shame and hold your brother's hand to recover him. It is very important because everywhere it is not common to any country. It is the same thing everywhere that there is this envy and jealousy that the enemy, he cannot take the Bible away from us, but he is able to throw these thoughts and we receive it and build on it and then we're getting weaker. Right. See that no matter the press, what have we achieved? No matter the push, where have we reached? Amen. Amen. Love covered the multitude of iniquity. Amen. 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 So, if we will not only talk about the prophet, but we will live the kind of life that he lived, because he was our own example in this age, yeah. then we will do more, because if two persons will do what one person did 40 years ago, don't you think that we will cover more space we will do more. It is not our position to determine who was made to believe the word or not. But it is our place to preach it. It is our place to let them have it. If they reject it, that is their business. That's not ours. But in the first thing, we need to do what we ought to do. Be there at the right time, speaking at the right time, and projecting at all times. Be not ashamed of it. And then on the day of reckoning, you have done your part. May the Lord bless us and keep us and establish us in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ.